Well, as you can see, I'm throwing braid with my crankbait, and I know a lot of you think, well, why am I throwing braid? And, and let, let me just give you a little bit of history here. You know, for years and years and years, I threw mono. And you're always striving to find something that's a little bit better, something that's a, a little bit more sensitive. And that's what braid has to offer me. I can actually feel my bait vibrating when it touches the water. Versus mono, I've got to get it halfway back at least before I can start feeling my bait. Fluorocarbon, a lot of people ask me, you know, what about fluorocarbon? And personally, I just beat fluorocarbon down. When I throw it in, in five or six hours, it, it's, it's garbage, it's trash. Uh, I stretch it because I throw so hard, I'm whipping my heart, uh, rod so hard, that actually fluoro just keeps stretching and stretching until it becomes brittle. It's really hard on that. I actually learned my lesson a hard way throwing fluorocarbon when a fish broke my line in a tournament and I just retied. And I, and I kept thinking, what was the deal? Actually, if I hadn't laid that rod down, I'd probably lost everyone that bit me. But the line just got very, very brittle because it was getting stressed out. Yeah, fluoro sinks, it does a lot of things, but it really doesn't affect the crankbait. Fluoro has quite a bit of stretch in it, but you're taking all that stretch out when you're making long, hard casts, especially with deeper crankbaits. So just you people out there listening, really be aware that I don't recommend fluorocarbon. Now fishing a, a shaky head, a worm, a Carolina rig, yeah, you can't beat. But when it comes to a crankbait, you're gonna lose a fish that you really hate to lose before it's all said and done. And the thing about braid over, over mono is when you're making really long casts and you hook a fish way out there with mono, you know, you can almost jerk as hard as you want to and you're barely, barely moving that line because of the stretch in it. So uh, it's really hard to get a hook in the fish. Where braid, you know, you're dead on. You're right in contact with it. And actually, when he bites it, no matter how far he is, when you move your rod, it moves the bait and it moves the hooks into that fish. So a tremendous difference. You gotta realize that smaller diameter makes your bait more lively. And what happens, that bait is moving where your line ties on. And the bigger that line, the more it slows that down. You know, braid comes in 15 pound test, but it's 10 pound diameter of most mono. And that's what I'm talking about when I say 011. So if you stick around 10 pound test diameter, not the, actually the pound test it is, that's what you're looking for. And that's one thing you get with braid, you get a stronger, heavier line in the same diameter as you get with mono. So <laughs> you gotta have a little strength there to get that five or six pounder in. So I would recommend 10, and usually in braid that means it's 15 pound, it could be 20 pound. And I use a lot of 20 pound braid that is actually 12 pound test. In all my fishing, there's only been one time in my life that I used anything heavier than 12 pound test. And that was when I was at Falcon, when I set the FLW record, one day record. And it was uh, just cause we're fishing flooded bushes and flooded timber and 15, 18 feet of water. And, and it was sort of, one of those deals where I was I was scared. I mean, it really was. It's just one of those deals, deals that I was scared. But I'll show you something. I get this fish in. Um, I actually touched a little treetop in there with this digger. And this, this digger 8.5 is a heck of a bait. And he really didn't want the bait good. And probably, I, I'm, I'll show you something. This fish, probably I would have never caught him without braided line. I mean, this fish, look at him, he's barely hooked, and he's in a hard part of his mouth. Look at this. Now, if I don't have braided line, I'm probably not gonna catch this fish. Barely caught him. But with braid, it your hook penetrates. I mean, it really just makes a tremendous difference. I, I can't stress how important it is on hook sets. And actually, you don't have to hook set. You can just throw it out there and wind it. They're going to catch themselves, but that's what Bray can do. My fishing ability, my catch ratio, I know has went up 50 or 60% just by the use of, of non-stretch line. <clears throat> he must have followed it. Oh, this is a big fish here. Mm. 
may have him foul hooked. Oh man. Now this, fi this fish hit where a lot of fish hit at, and that is right at the boat, right when you stop it, or you turn around talking to the camera. <laughs> Great place to catch a fish. So don't forget when you're winding your crankbait, no matter what kind of bait it is, always slow it down or stop it right before when the bait makes that turn. It's a killer place to catch a fish, especially for farming your bait. As you can see, this is one of those fish that you catch at the last minute when your bait's almost out of the water. And important thing, if you want to learn to catch more fish also, especially with a crane bait, make sure you stop that bait or pause it right when it starts to come up. And usually if a fish is following it like this fish was, when you stop it, he's got to make a decision. Actually, he's got three choices. He can run into it and you can catch him, or he can bite it and you can catch him, or he's going to knock at it and get away. So make sure that half your cast during the day you're going to stop your bait right when it starts to come up. I promise you it's going to add fish like this to your live well.